Hello everyone, I'm Jessica and today is going to be my wrap up for the month of April. April was kind of slumpy for me. I was only really able to finish five books, six books, four books, a graphic novel, and a novella. So take that as you will. I also DNF'd a book this month and then unhauled its sequel. So we'll start there and work our way up in ratings. So my DNF for this month was The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Avier. I talked about this in my vlog and wrap up for Fantasyathon because that is when I was reading it. It is a retelling of Thousand and One Nights where a girl named Scheherazade volunteers to marry a murderous king and she basically tells him a story so fanciful that he doesn't kill her in the morning like he has his other brides and she continues telling him these stories every night and she lives a thousand and one nights. I don't know if she dies at the end. I don't know what happens because I've never read that story either but I was hoping for so much more from this book because of the way that everyone talks about it and I have some serious problems with this book. I DNF'd this at 49%. I can compare it to Twilight in that there is a huge love triangle. One member of the love triangle is a boy who has loved this girl her whole life and she has loved him her whole life. Um, they've had like super childhood crush going on and the other boy is probably going to kill her. Love triangles. What the fuck? Like a Twilight love triangle at that. This was so so insta-love heavy. Just disgusting insta-love. Like not just like you meet this guy and he's super cool and like you insta-love fall in love with him. Like he is trash. He's disgusting. Everything you think about him is horrifying and yet somehow you fall in love with him and that leads us to the third reason why I DNF'd this and the way that he makes her fall in love with him is obviously his magic dick because he touches her with it and within days of touching this magic phallus she loves him so much the love is unreal god if only all men could have a dick so magical the world would be a much better place because men would have no problems getting women to fall in love with them so long as they kept getting that magic dick This is my moment of silence for his magic dick. As we worship him. And his dick that is magic. Okay, so anyway, yeah. Um, I have problems with that, obviously. Like, essentially, I have problems. I have a lot of problems. My Goodreads review will be linked below for all of these, obviously, as always. Um, but I'm going to talk about this a little more, so if you don't want to know more about this book, then skip until you see me put the book down. I'll also put the next timestamp in the down bar. So I didn't read the whole book, but I read a spoiler, basically, of this book. And essentially knew that it was not what I wanted to read because he basically rapes her. You do get that, right? Like she marries him willingly, sure, because she wants to get revenge. She wants to kill him. He shows up to her bedroom. It is so disgusting and so glossed over that she wants nothing to do with him and yet because of the way that she wants to change the world and kill him, she basically just lays there and lets him have his way with her. Just because she doesn't fight him doesn't mean it wasn't rape. And continues to do this for nights on end. I'm just really not okay with that, especially because she started to develop feelings for him. Had she not started to develop feelings for him and had it continued on this theory of uh, he's a horrible person, I probably wouldn't feel as bad about it because he would be a horrible person. But you're trying to portray him to me as someone who is misunderstood and who is doing what he has to do in order to be there for his kingdom. And first off, I call bullshit. Second off, I have no sympathy for a man who this is the first bride that he's had that he wants to actually spend time with. And so spending time with her obviously means that he must have sex with her even though she doesn't want to have sex with him multiple times. Um, using his magic dick on her. You want me to believe that he's doing this because it's what's best for the kingdom, because he's being punished. But in what world, in what world, and I could be wrong because again, I didn't finish it. All I read was spoilers. Please tell me if I'm wrong. 
below. In what world does a father who is so upset by the death of his daughter curse a man to have to marry and murder other men's daughters? He's in so much grief about the loss of his daughter that he feels like the answer to all of it is to make another hundred men live their lives without their daughters. How is that punishment to the king? How is that punishment to the man that you believe is the murderer of your child? There is in no way do I believe that that is accurate. And should the king really feel like he's trying to do what's best for his kingdom, I believe the answer would be to just go jump off a fucking cliff and get it over with. Because you care so much about your life that you think your life is worth more than a hundred random women that you just pick from a lottery from the streets. Your life is that much more important than those hundred other lives, those hundred other girls that you kill. And not just their lives, but the lives of their families that are destroyed forever, obviously from Scheherazade's side. She sees what it goes through, what happens when one of those girls dies, and he feels like his life is worth more than all of that. No, I cannot. And we'll not sit through the other half of it. I will say that I did enjoy the descriptive parts of it. It was very descriptive, and I liked that aspect of Renee's writing, but I also did not like Flame in the Mist or um, Smoke in the Sun, and I didn't like this, and obviously I'm not gonna read this because I haven't read this, and so I'm pretty much probably never gonna buy another Audie book again. And after the Magic Dick Saga, I think, which is what this should be titled, this, sh this should just be titled the Magic Dick Saga. I obviously have very strong feelings. Um, I'm at like minute 11 in this video of recording, and this is the only book I've talked about so far. I'm gonna put it down now and continue on because I could be here for the rest of my life talking about this. And so because I didn't finish reading The Wrath and the Dawn, I'm obviously not gonna read The Rose and the Dagger, so I'm just going to unhaul this, and I wanted to mention it here. After that, things got much better because after my DNF, the lowest rating that I had was a 3.75. So my 3.75 is Aragon by Christopher Paolini. It is a book set in a world where there are dragons and dragon writers. And I essentially wrote down, I, I wrote down the synopsis as this. Boyfriend rock. Rock is dragon egg. Egg hatches. Boy rides dragon. Everyone dies. Because that's kind of how I feel about it. These books are so huge. I've had them forever. Um, this one doesn't seem too bad, but it is like 700 and some pages. 752 pages and the other books are massive so I've always been kind of terrified to just read these because they're so big and I'm just oh, like what if I don't like them what if I do like them and I have to read them all which is gonna be the case I love the characters in this I really like the way that they're fleshed out and just the different things about them I really enjoyed I do feel like the book dragged a little bit there was a lot of description that I just don't feel like is necessary but that's how typically how adult high fantasy is, but this is considered YA, so that was kind of weird for me. I wasn't expecting so much nonsense description, but overall I really enjoyed it. I definitely want to continue on with the series. I plan to buddy read the second book in the series, which is Eldest, with Brianna from Brainy Days and Stormy Nights. So hopefully we can get to that within the next couple of months. Hopefully. The next book we're going to talk about is the Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan. This is the first book in the Kane Chronicles. The stars, if I can't remember. Carter and Sadie Kane, a brother and sister who were separated at childhood after the death of their mother. When the two teens are brought back together, they learn that their family comes from a long line of Egyptian magicians and that they too have magic. The dark god Set has risen and taken their father hostage and the two of them must figure out how to rescue their father before it's too late. Yeah, it's been a while since I read this one I read at the beginning of the month, so I'm like, what is it about? I gave this a four out of five stars. I completely understand why this is not as popular as Rick's other series, Percy Jackson, uh, Heroes of Olympus, Magnus Chase, Apollo, whatever that series is. The Egyptian gods are so much more prevalent in this series than just the kids, which I feel like the other books are like a main cast of character of kids and you just get the gods kind of sprinkled out, whereas this is very god heavy. And the Egyptian religion and their gods are not as familiar to me as what the Greek, Roman, and Norse are. So having to like learn new gods was fun, but daunting a little. Other than that though, this is classic Ray Orden. It is witty, fun, adventurous, dangerous, heart-wrenching at times. Just classic, classic Ray Orden. And I did really enjoy it. I will definitely be continuing this series. 
This is another one that I read earlier this month so I'm going to continue to read from my own handwritten description of what this book is about. It is Starflight by Melissa Landers and my description says thusly. A poor orphan becomes a servant to a rich tormentor for a ride in space, anything to get away from Earth and out to the wastelands where she can be free. Mishaps and Sue and they soon find themselves on a rickety ship with an eccentric crew. The two must find a way to the outer realm while coming up against space pirates, the galaxy's police force, and something so terrifying they wear cyanide pendants around their necks. Yeah, it was fun. This is where I remind you that I, I, I rated this four out of five stars. And this is where I remind you that I base my rating scale based off of six factors that are rated one through five and then an average to what the rate would be. This book definitely had issues, a um, convenient character development, and lack of world building are two of the main issues that I had, but it excelled in two important categories. The first of which being humor, the sass, the sarcasm. Oh my gosh. Like this was classic me. Like this was so on brand for my humor. You do not even understand. The other thing about this that really worked for me was the adventure aspect of it. It really was just these handful of characters running from everyone because they had so many different people pursuing them, so many mishaps, so much happening. It just was one thing after another and it was amazing. It just flew by and I did really enjoy this one. Next is Witch Volume 4. This is a graphic novel series about five girls who are thrown together to protect a veil which separates their world from a magical world and the monsters that live in that magical world. This series has different um, plot arcs. Each arc lasts three books, so this was the first book in a new arc with a new villain. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. So as I said, this one starts a new arc with a new villain and it not only has that aspect of it, but it also has them dealing with the repercussions of the previous arc and what happened in defeating that villain. So it's very interesting like how you mix the two arcs together. I really enjoy this story. I definitely, I love the artwork. The artwork is super pretty and it's very nostalgic for me because I used to watch a TV, TV show when I was younger. So nostalgia factor plus pretty artwork plus easy to read stories that I enjoy super fun. The next book that I read this month was the novella. It was Twisted Desire by Jessie Elliott. This book follows two characters from her main series, but they are side characters, Nikolai and Skylar, and basically takes place during part of book two, and it fills in all the little gaps that we didn't get in book two. I gave this a 4.25 out of five stars. I loved it. Skylar and Nick are my twisted OTP. I absolutely love them. I have a full review video for this. I will link it in the description box below as well as in the cards so you can check it out. But suffice it to say, if you enjoy romance and you enjoy anything with like a little bit of fantasy in it, you should definitely check out Jessie's Twisted series. It's, it's so much fun. And the last and highest rated book this month was The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. And again, I'm going to read my description from here because I, it's late and I don't have the brain power to come up with a description right now. Leah is the first daughter and a princess who is supposed to be marrying an unknown prince. Instead, she runs off the morning of her wedding to a small village far away from her old home with her best friend in tow. They work at an inn and hide away, no one discovering who they are. But unknown to them, they've been followed by two handsome strangers. One is an assassin sent to kill Leah and the other is the prince who she ran from. This book is fantasy. It has a little bit of magic but not a lot and is really about, for me so far, has been about the friendship between Leah and her best friend. And I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I loved it. It had all of the things that I love. Amazing world building, character growth, story arcs, character relationships. Oh my gosh, the character relationships. I love this book. The key thing about this book is the identities of Rafe and Caden are hidden from the reader until mm, towards the very end of the book. Now, it was spoiled for me, so I knew which guy was which guy, like which one was the assassin and which one was the prince. It, I don't think it took anything away from it. Like I really, st I still really enjoyed it, but I feel like it might have been maybe a five star if I hadn't known that the whole time. But I love that aspect of it. I love the, I love the mystery aspect that kind of got thrown in there without really needing to be there, but was still really enjoyable. I absolutely love this book. I cannot wait to continue reading it, even though I have heard people say that the second book was not as good and the third book was even worse. But I have high hopes, so yay. So those are the five books that I read this month, six books 
if you got the one that you can't see right now. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these and how you felt about them. I would love to talk about them with you. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, and book related videos on Mondays and Wednesdays and bonus videos on the weekends. So until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!